Taylor Owen is the Beaverbrook Chair of Media, Ethics and Communication in the Max Bell School of Public Policy at McGill University in Montreal. He joins me now. Mr. Owen, uh, good to see you. Thanks for being with us. We don't know much about the details of the digital charter promised by the Prime Minister today, but what's your reaction to the, the direction the Prime Minister is taking on this? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I was uh, pleased by the direction, to be honest. I think the framing of the Christchurch call the day before um, which was focusing very narrowly on terrorism and violent extremism and was really a voluntary measure that had almost no um, obligations to the signatories, um, was, was a real problem. And the Prime Minister has gone in a very different direction today by setting out what is ultimately a broad governance um, strategy uh, for platforms, which is, I think, the direction we need to be going. Okay. I said you were in, in Montreal, you're in Vancouver, of course. The, the Prime Minister talked about fines for social media companies uh, that don't do more to control what's on their platforms. Uh, what do you think we, we need to, to push the social media companies to take more action and more responsibility for what's on their platforms? Yeah, I mean, I think we need a broad regulatory framework for how to deal with these sets of problems. And the challenge, you put your hidden nail on the head there with the fines. I mean, the problem up until now is we've had, we've had no reasonable punitive capacity for even enforcing our own existing laws in this space. And this is something that every country that's moved towards taking this governance of this space seriously, the, one of the first things they've done is put on significant penalty, financial penalties for breaches of new privacy law um, or, or new content law. So GDPR, for example, f allows a fine of 4% of global revenue. And that's the kind of fine that I think start, will start to get the attention of these companies who have faced with just minor financial penalty or almost the impossibility of, um, of uh, enforcing any penalty at all um, aren't, aren't going to change their behavior. So Kimono, you know, Canada is kind of leading the way on this. And I'm curious to know what you think about why there seems to be such a reluctance for governments and the social media companies to get more involved in, in regulating content. The U.S. The U.S. government is throwing up its hands and, and talks a lot about protecting free, spree, free speech. How, how much of a threat to free speech is greater regulation? Well, I mean, we have, to, we have to be clear on which notion of free speech and which country's notion of free speech. Uh, many of these companies, most of these companies, um, emerged um, in the United States, obviously, and are therefore applying an American notion of free speech, which is, is quite absolute, um, to the way they operate in the rest of the world. And we know that different countries have different laws and different norms around speech than the United States does. And so the question is, I think for me, is whether those national norms in other democratic countries around speech are going to be enforced and applied on these American platforms. Right. So, so is the issue really controlling and, and I guess, limiting, um, I mean, the free speech piece is one part of it, but then there's the whole issue of... of trying to control and, and limit the amplification of hate or extremism when we find it on those, on those platforms. That's the responsibility of social media platforms, uh, or should it be? It, it should. I mean, that, and that's to me where potential liability or accountability needs to sit. Um, there's a big difference between anyone having, be, having a right to say something on a platform. That is to me where free speech is critical, not limiting the ability of individuals to say things that are legal on these platforms. Um, but where we can hold them accountable, I think, is in how the platforms amplify that speech, how they spread it to m potentially millions of people, and how they then monetize and commoditize that amplification. And that's the point I think we can focus some of our regulatory measures. So uh, beyond the fines, what uh, and as, as I say, there's not much in the way of detail on, on the digital charter yet. It's to come yeah. in different announcements, we're told by the government. What, what needs to be in it beyond the fines? I think there's two, three broad categories of governance that needs to happen here. Um, content policy, so looking at harmful speech and hate speech and how that will be enforced, as you mentioned. Um, data policy, so increased data rights for individuals to pr protect our data and give us more, to empower us to use our data in different ways. Um, and competition policy, which was also alluded to today, that we need to be looking at things like antitrust, at things like competition policy, to make sure that our markets are remaining open and that our the Canadian digital economy is is able to compete in a in a legitimate way against these global companies. 
Let's finish on this at the end of the Christchurch Call Summit uh, yesterday. Facebook, Google, Twitter, and some of the other technology giants, they pledged to step up their efforts to prevent their platforms from being used to spread, spread hatred and uh, help extremist groups organize and broadcast attacks and so on. Can they be trusted to do enough on their own? Um, I'm, I'm not sure that's the, the, the relevant framing for this. I mean, I think we've had 15 years of largely self-regulation in this space that's led us to the set of problems we have now. And from my view, if a government um, sees a social harm to its population, then it's its responsibility to step in and govern it, because um, they are ultimately the bodies in our society that have democratic accountability. Um, so yes, I think platforms and these tech companies are doing way more now than they were even just a year ago. But that is because of increased public pressure, public awareness of these problems, and most importantly, the, the turning of attention from governments to this set of problems. Without that, they wouldn't be doing this. All right, Taylor Owen, uh, thank you for your perspective tonight. Good to talk to you. Anytime.